Okay, so now we will continue talking about loops, correct? So what did I say? Loop is for repetitive task, correct? Repeat, repetitive, okay? Uh, task and we have two types of loop for loop and while loop right for loop is used when you know exactly how many, how many times. times right and while works on conditions so today i'll show you we'll look we'll do more of for loop examples and see how it works okay now let's say i want to generate numbers from 1 to 20. I want to generate 1 to 20, right? So I can say for i in range 1, comma 21, right? Because number starts from 1, one right? And it will end 1 before what you give. So I need 20. So I need to go up to 21. And I can simply say print i, correct? Now, when I run this, what happens? You now you have 1 to 20 in a straight line. What I want to put them in a next to each other. I want to put next to each other. So what I'll do? What is the command? End. Right? So see, by default, every print has a new line. We discussed about new line, isn't it? Okay, slash end. Okay, escape sequence. So by default, every print has new line. Okay, every print has new line. So, so by default, print has new line but at the end. Okay, so whenever you are doing print so far, you see uh, uh, the next print will print in the next line. So there is a invisible new line at the end of print statement. Invisible new line at the end of print statement. How do you remove that? Here, I need to remove it, isn't it? So something which is invisible, how can you remove it? Okay. So something which is invisible, you cannot remove it, isn't it? We can remove it by first making it visible. So I told you, print has invisible new line. Okay. Now let's make it visible. So the new line which is invisible, you can make it visible using end command. Okay, so end equal to slash n. This command is there with all the print statement. With all the print statement, you have end equal to slash n. So now when you run it, you see, this is what is the output. No change in output. This is what is there with every print command. If you want to remove it, remove, delete it. Now, now that you have made it visible, now you can delete it. Now when I remove it and then run it, so you see all the numbers are printed together. I can give comma, space, slash t, whatever you want to give, you can give. So now you see you have, so end command, okay, is used to delete the invisible new line, which is there, okay, not in delete, end command is used to handle, okay, the new line, which is there end of the print statement. You can handle it the way you want to, you can, Say comma, space, dot, whatever you want to do, you can give it here. <clears throat> now you see, this, after printing this, our cursor is here. So whatever if I, whatever I want to print, will get printed at the end of this line. So generally when you are using new line, okay, you should print, give a blank print. So that what happens? This comes down to the next line. Because print has a new line, isn't it? So this will break and bring it to the next line so that when you print thank you, it prints in a new line and not in continuation with this. Okay, so this is how you will use end. Okay, now tell me how we'll write a program to generate first 10 odd numbers or first 10 even numbers. Generate first 10 odd numbers okay how to generate first 10 odd numbers so i said 10 so i can say 
range of 10 range of range of range of uh, 10 will generate values like 0 1 2 3 4 up to 9 okay so this is as a counter and i said generate odd number odd number is what one three, one, three correct so first odd number is one. one second odd number is three so if i say i into two plus one will it work so zero into two zero plus one one then zero into one i becomes one right so now you see one three five seven nine okay so this is your 10 numbers because 10 times we are, we are iterating the loop so 10 times we are generating the loop we are running the loop right and here we are so this is the formula to generate your odd number okay if i need 50th odd number i will say 50th into uh, 2 plus 1 okay so that will give you odd number at that place correct similarly if i have to generate even number first 10 okay or here i will say generate even number between 10 and 20. Now you see. So uh, generate even number between 10 and 20. So I need to start from 10, go up to 21, and at the step of 2, so 10, 12, right? And you can simply print i. So it's a I'm just trying to show you different way of doing it, right? So between 10 and 20, you got even numbers, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, right? So this is how you can generate different numbers, right? Okay. Um, now let's say I want to generate multiplication table. Multiplication. multiplication table. So I'll say multiplication table of 5, let's say. Right? So I'll say for i in range, I need from 1 to 11, right? So multiple table of 10 up to 10 multiples. Right? So I can simply say for i in range, Right, one to ten. So this will be ten multiples. I'll say print. Okay, format string. So first I need to say five. So here I can directly say five, or I can take num equal to five, and then use num rather. Okay, it's better because if I change it to write multiple table of ten, you can just say num equal to ten and it will work. Right. So num into i equal to num into i correct so num variable will be replaced five then as it is star will be printed then you want to replace this with one two so on equal to as it is then you say num into i so you know five into one five into two right let's print this and see so see you got multiplication table here, isn't it? If I want to say multiplication table of 8, right? you simply change it to 8. And this will work, isn't it? OK? Now, let's see this. I want you to generate multiplication table okay, of 1 to 10 with 10 multiples. So not just one number, but 1 to 10. Multiplication table of 1 to 10 up to 10 multiples. So first I have to say one multiplication table, then 2, then 3, then 4. Right? So see here, we need to use two loops. One loop that we have seen to generate the multiples, right? And another loop will generate values. So which will be generated first? Value should be generated first or multiple should be generated first? 
value of 1 to 10, okay, should be generated first or multiple should be generated first? See here. No, we have to generate numbers first, isn't it? Eight, then you're multiplying, right? So we want something which will keep changing the value. <clears throat> first one, then two, then three, then four, right? <clears throat> so I'll copy the same stuff. And instead of num equal to eight, we have to say for num in range one comma 11. Okay, so now you see, and this will be inside this. So this is a nested loop. Okay, the nested loop. So, so this is the first loop. So num will take the value of one. Then it comes here. Then I will take the value of one. So you get num into i, num into i, one into one, one into one, one. Now you see the inner loop will run 10 times. So the outer loop num will remain one. Num will remain one because one iteration of num, because the second loop is inside the first loop. So one iteration of outer loop, one iteration of outer loop is complete iteration of inner loop. Okay. Now let's say I tell you go go to that place and come back. So you go there and come back. Now that place has something which makes you run 10 times, let's say. If I tell you go to that place and come back, so you go there, then you have to run 10 times because that makes you run 10 times, then you come back. So one going and coming, okay, involves you to run 10 times inside. So that's a one loop here, one value here will require this to run 10 times. Then it goes here. Num becomes two now. Again, you know, this will make you run multiple times. Num becomes three now. Again, this will run multiple times. Right? So this is how you are able to generate multiplication table from one to 10. You see? So you have one into one up to 10, then two into one, right? Now the question is, next question that we'll do is, multiplication table of 1 to 10, 10 multiples, okay? Print them side by side. So something like this. 1 into 1 equal to 1. Okay, then one into two equal to two, right? So on up to one into 10 equal to 10, right? Now the two should be here. Two, two into one equal to two. Two into two equal to 2. So on up to 10 into 1 equal to 10. Right? <clears throat> so see this. So what we are doing here, if you see, we are, okay, so generally after printing this, there is a new line. That's why we came down here. So we have to remove this new line first. We, we need to display entire thing in one row first, 10 multiples, right? And when you are done with 10 multiples, after that, we are changing the line. Mm -hmm. So multiple one, multiple two, multiple three, it has to run in the same line. Okay. So, okay. Same exam, I think we have written, right? So after printing this multiples, okay, we have to say, and equal to maybe we'll give slash t right or maybe we'll give one two three spaces whatever slash t we can give so instead of printing new line we are giving tab number of space we want next values to be printed after tab number of space and what happens if you give slash and everything like will be printed in one line but after we're done with 10 multiples, after we're done with 10 multiples, then we want it to break the line, isn't it? After doing 10, the next set should begin from next line. 
So after doing 10, the next should begin from next line. So that's why I gave print blank. It will change the line. Okay. Now let's see if this has given us what we want. So here it is. 1 into 1, 1 into 2, right? Is this what we want? No. Okay, so see here, it is first should be one multiplication table. So left side should be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So what it means is just change it to i and this to num. So changing it here, I mean, doesn't matter because it's multiplication, multiplication only, right? But logic says it should be i into num. Now, when you run it, you see 1 into 1 equal to 1, 2 into 1. So, it is one multiplication table. Then, oops, did it work? No, 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 no. Now, what happened? This is changing. This should not change, right? So, I think it was correct only, right? What did I do? So, so num is outside. Num will change less. No, no. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> See, okay. So let's look here. I will change faster. Correct? I will change faster. So if you see this value here, example that we have here. So this is changing faster, like 1, 2, 10. Right, this is remaining constant. So num should be right and i should be on the left. That's why it's changing, right? One, two, three. I should be changing fast. So i should be on the left and num should be on the right. Correct? Okay. So let's see this. Now it, it's correct, isn't it? One into one, one into two, one into three, two into one. Okay, this is what we wanted. Is it good? Okay. Now you see one more thing here. Okay. Thing is, this 10, okay, so it is all exactly below here. But what happened? This 10 is pushed to the right because this is two digit. Right? And then two is exactly below. So it's all good, isn't it? 10 is exactly below 10. So this looks good. You can, you know. So this is what we want actually, isn't it? So this is how you can actually print a multiplication table of 1 to 10 and you can print it side by side. So it, we are printing, the inner loop is printing this. Inner loop is printing this. Why it says num, so num will be first 1 and then i into num. So 1 into 1, 2 into 1, 3 into 1, 4 into 1, 5 into 1, 6 into 1, so on. After printing the inner loop 10 times, it comes here, changes the line. Then goes up, now num becomes 2. So 2 into 1, I mean 1 into 2, 2 into 2, 3 into 2, 4 into 2, so on. Then it changes again. Right? So this is how you can generate multiple values. So I'll just pause for a few seconds. I just want to recollect what we have done. And then we'll move ahead. Okay. So these were some examples using for loop. We will do some more examples of for loop. Okay. So let's do some more examples. Okay, so let's say I want to print a star. How will you print a star? You print a star like this, right? So if I say print, and when you run it, it prints a star. I need to print five stars. How do you do that? You say print. Okay. Now that we know loop, you can directly say for i in range five, correct? Right? And we'll push this inside for loop. And when you run it, you get five stars. Correct? Now I want to print these stars in one single line. Then how do I do that? Okay. And here I'll give space, let's say. What happens? All the stars will be printed in a single line. 
Okay. Okay. Now let's build on this. I want to print square pattern of stars. I want to print square pattern of stars. That means let's say five. So five, five stars, then five stars, five stars, five times. Isn't it? So um, I'll say, okay, num equal to five. And then you say print. Now I'll copy this. Okay. So you get five stars here, right? Okay. So now you see, since we have used end, we have to use print, right? Otherwise, it'll print in the same line. Okay. So now when you run it, it prints star. Okay. So let's, let's what I'll do is I'll put this in the print itself so that you can actually see what we are trying to do. And I'll give a slash n here so that there is some gap. Okay. So print square pattern of stars. So printing square. Okay. Now well, see, this is one row, right? This is square pattern means five in rows, five in columns. So five rows, five columns, right? Or six rows, six columns. That is square pattern, right? Equal number of stars in the rows also and columns also. So if I say n equal to five, that means I'm saying five rows and five columns, right? Now, how do I make this, okay, um, like equal? So this is one row. I need to repeat same thing five more times, right? So I need to repeat this thing. So this is this becomes an inner loop. I want to repeat this entire. This is one row. You want to repeat this one row five times. So I can say print, not print. We'll start with four, right? Four J in the range. And let's use num. Why five? Okay, because we said five. Let's, you know, num equal to five. Let's use num. And this will go inside this. So now what happens? Okay. It prints five, five, five. Now, same reason, okay? New, uh, we have removed this new line, so it prints five in one line, but after completing the inner loop, it has to again come to the next line, isn't it? So you have to say print outside the inner loop before you run the outer loop, just like a multiplication table. So this is how you get square pattern, right? Now let's say I want to build a um, triangle pattern. Right angled triangle pattern. So triangle means what? It can be first one star, then two star, then three star. Okay, the number of stars should be increasing. So if I take same example here, okay, so when you run it, so you get a square, but here I want only one star. I want only two star. I want only three star. I want only four star. So what is happening is the number of rows, this is your J is talking about the number of rows, isn't it? Tracking rows. And this is your column, right? So that's why, you see, first we got only one row because we run inner loop only once. When you run inner loop five times, you got five rows. So here you see this num should not change. We need five rows only. But column should be increasing. Column should be increasing. First one, then two, then three, then four. So right now it is fixed as five. It should not be fixed as five. It should be first one. How will you get one here? So if it, J is first zero. So if I say zero plus one, J plus one. If I say J plus one, then you see first time J is zero. Then second, so it becomes zero plus one, one. Second time J will be yeah. one. Yeah. Then one plus one, two. So it is increasing one, two. Last value of J is going to be four. So four plus one, five, right? So your triangle, okay, is not generated. See, before you do any program, and we discussed this before as well. Before you do any program, first you have to think 
in your mind what do you want how do you want the output to be isn't it so if you want so so here i just said your objective is to gen, you know increase the i value from 1 2 3 how can i do it with minimum effort oh j is anyway increasing from 0 to 4 so i can hop on to j i can just use j value right so this is how you can get j value so now you see you get right angle triangle here like this now same thing okay i want to draw right angle triangle but now I want to draw an inverted pattern. That means first I want it to have five, then four, then three, so on. Then what should I do? I want this to be five. But second time, I want it to be four. So if I say now minus J, you see my work is done. Because num is five. Then J first time is 0. So 5 minus 0 is 5. Second time it is 5 minus 1, 4. Third time it is 5 minus 2, 3, right? So my work is done. You see, this is how you get inverted triangle. Right? So this is example of your loop. Or low. Next question is I want you to create an isolesis triangle, isolesis triangle, right? What is isolesis triangle? Isolesis triangle is where the sides are equal, right? Length, uh, you know, the two sides will be equal, right? So uh, something like this, okay? So I'll say isosceles. Triangle. Now, isosceles triangle, I just said, will have, okay, you will have five star, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Next, you will have, you can have inverted. So, I'll do one pattern, you do the other pattern. I will do the inverted isosceles triangle. Right? See, there's an extra space I'm giving. <clears throat> this is example. <clears throat> this is example of your isolus triangle. Right? So we printed first five. Okay. Now next is you invert. Okay, that is your assignment. So I have five, then four. I'm printing five, four, three, two, one. <clears throat> five, four, three, two, one is very similar to this one, right? Inverted right angle triangle. So I will take that inverted right angle triangle here, code. I'll paste it here. But you see here, okay. Okay, so we, we, we so this is five, four, three, two, one, right? But you see here, I have to introduce zero space, one space, two spaces, three spaces, four spaces. Now, in right angle triangle, spaces are on the right side. So we never bothered about giving spaces. But now you see, spaces will be on the left hand side. So on the left side, we have to give spaces. So it's like, uh, so the triangle is like printing two pattern together. Which are two pattern? Your space pattern as well as your star pattern. So space is increasing from 0 to 4 and star is decreasing from 5 to 1. So before we print star, we need to print space. It is space and star together. And star is from 0 to 4. So I can simply use J here. And just to differentiate between these two, right? Okay, we will put some other variable like let's say K or something. Let's not use same variable, okay? We can use no problem, but let's not get confused. Okay, so what happened? So J, okay, so we are saying J and we're printing star here, right? It should be space, correct? Okay, so now what happened, you see, it's a, you know, the right angle triangle. Why? 
because we are giving space here also and here also. We are giving two spaces, but we need actually only one space. So you can remove this end space. See, you got it. So you have to keep trying. You try one, see the output. No, something is wrong. Okay, go back and change it. Now you see the output. Okay. So you should not be scared of doing program. You should do your program as much as possible. Okay. Okay. Now your assignment is print same. Same triangle, but in opposite manner. The star should be one, two. Okay. Okay, so assignment I'll write here. Inverted as well as trying. Okay. Write your code here. Something like that. Okay. Just to differentiate. Okay. So try this. This is assignment. Try to do this. All right. I'll put them all together here. Okay. One more last program we'll do in loop. Then we'll move to while. You see, we did a program earlier to read marks of five subject and calculate average and total and average, isn't it? Marks of subjects. Right. Marks of five subjects. So how did we read marks of five subject? We said. My M1 equal to int of input, okay, marks in subject one, right? And then we repeated it five times, you know, and this is how we got marks in five subject, right? But now that we know loops, can we handle it using loop instead of writing it five times, okay? So this is what you want, right? You want marks in five subject. So I'm going to say for i in range five. When I say for i in range five, okay? Now when you run this program, so see, it's asking you five times, correct? Now, a couple of things that we need to change here. First thing that we need to change is this one value. Right? It's saying subject one, subject two, subject three, but though it's subject two and three, it's still saying one. So this, instead of one, we need to replace this with something else. And remember, input takes only one parameter. Okay, it doesn't take multiple parameters like print. Print, you can have multiple parameters, but input takes only one parameter. Right? So you have to say marks in subject and add two string. Okay? So when I add this, now it becomes marks in subject plus colon. And here before colon, I need to add I plus one. Right? Now you see this I plus one, okay, is integer. Isn't it? We are saying I in range. So it is integer. Now this is string. String can only be added to string. String cannot be added to an integer. So if I try to run this, this will give you error, okay? If I try to run it, it will give you error because you can only concatenate string to string, not string to integer. So what do we do? We convert this into a string. So I'll say here, str of. Now this is also a string, this is also a string, and this is also a string. Now when you run it, so say subject one, subject two, Subject three, subject four, subject five, great. 
No, I need to do addition, right? Total. How do we calculate total? Now, if if I do total here outside the loop, now what happens? M1 is having all the marks, isn't it? You have M1, which has all the marks. And every time your loop is running, M1 is getting updated with new marks. Okay, so if I run it here, and let's say I print, I say print total, and when I run it, okay, I say five, six, seven, eight, nine. What happened? Total has only nine because M1 is getting repeated every time. So what it means is we need to save the total value before M1 changes to M second M value. So your your total has to be inside okay and how do you do how do you save the value i'm going to define total equal to zero first and now i'm saying okay this is one way of handling values in the loop because m1 is getting changed every time i need to add this m1 to total total equal to total plus m1 right so this is what i told you plus equal to this is same as we discussed this before right total equal to total plus M1, right? So you remove total and interchange the sign. So plus equal to M1. What is happening is first it is zero. Now you're saying total equal to zero plus M1. Zero plus M1 means total will have value M1. Now again, second time loop is run, your old M1 plus new M1 becomes M1 plus M1, whatever new value comes. Then, so you are saving the value. So total, you keep on adding to the total. M1, M, you know, plus M1, plus M1, plus M1, plus M1. So outside the loop, your total has the total of all the values. So if I go and run this, you see, sub marks in subject one is one, two, three, four, and five. You get 15. You add all of them. Three plus three, six plus four, 10 plus five, 15. Okay, so this is uh, another way of adding values and you have to do it before, you have to do it before the value of M1 is lost. So how do we do that? For to, to do that, total has to get inside, right? Total has to get inside. And but the, in the beginning, total value is not defined because total plus total you cannot do. So you have to define total equal to zero beforehand. Okay, you can have an example where you might have to do multiplication. Then you have to say total equal to one there. And there is a one into X, one into X, and then into X, into X. Because if it is zero into everything becomes zero, isn't it? So if you are doing, if you are doing addition, it is total equal to zero. When you do multiplication, it is total equal to one. And then you'll be able to handle the values here. All right. With that, we complete our loop examples.